cool. Hi, um, I'm Rebecca, and I'm going to be talking about the HOT microgrant program um, with the assistance of uh, Miriam and Neymar, who are also participants in that program. Um, so I am uh, lucky enough to serve as the Community and Partnerships Manager in Humanitarian OpenStreetMap. Um, and one of the programs we have is a microgrants program where we give seed funding of sort of two to $11,000 to communities around the world in order to help them kind of close the, the barriers that they're facing to mapping and running training and um, scaling the work that they're doing. Um, I think, I mean, anyone who's kind of engaged with the global OSM community, attended a state of the map, um, that kind of thing, knows that there is loads of amazing things happening in almost every country, but a lot of those countries are very uh, resource poor and things like data, space to map, etc., is really expensive. Um, and so we really want to help close those gaps through our microgrant program. Um, we also kind of particularly wanted to talk about it because other organizations are thinking about doing microgrants, um, like the OSM Foundation. And there's quite a lot of lessons learned that we have um, from things that worked really well that we had no expectation that that would happen through to um, things that actually ended up being a little bit of a challenge to figure out. So we sort of wanted to share that as well. Um, and I'm just going to start with what we were hoping to achieve with these. Um, so we set up the program mainly with these four objectives, um, which were to help open mapping and open data communities with the resources that they need to grow, um, to encourage local leadership, um, gender balance, and participation, um, particularly from communities who like don't necessarily have access to technology or wouldn't kind of even think about something like mapping as being something they could participate in, um, but live in places where there's pretty much no data and could make a really valuable contribution to um, solving that problem. Um, also to help the communities to share their stories into the broader o OSM community and development humanitarian community, because um, a lot of them are kind of hoping to actually do more work as local NGOs, things like that. Um, and to broaden the ways that open mapping is reducing the impact um, of humanitarian disasters around the world. Um, so we've had the program going, it's in its second year now. Um, we've supported 31 communities in 23 countries, uh, which has been perhaps slightly more than we were initially expecting, um, but uh, really happy to have been able to, to go so fast on things. Um, those people have made 8.1 million local edits to OSM in the places that they live and work. Um, I think, I mean, it's a very large number, but we also feel like it's very meaningful because those are places which are very, very data scarce. Um, it's you know, reasonably easy to do a remote map, but it's really hard to get local knowledge onto that map, and so we really want to help that. Um, and we've trained over 10,000 new mappers to join those communities. Um, so they've been running training sessions, um, kind of workshops, uh, things like that. So, um, two of my OSM heroes and uh, recipients of the microgrants are now quickly going to talk about their uh, programs. So, we have Crowd to Map, who were a recipient of microgrant in 2017, and um, then Geo Chicas, who are halfway through their microgrant now. They were a 2018 recipient. Um, so, I'm just going to play this quick video, then Neymar will talk quickly about her program. Serengeti district, especially rural areas, is very, very important. This can help us as safe house staff to see how to reach those girls who will be in danger in their rural villages. Officials can use the map to locate where the schools and clinics and the community centers are in order to plan for the future development of other services that are needed in the community.
we use the uh, smartphone that we have to map different areas, especially in villages where most of vulnerable people and groups live there. So we manage to map uh, different local government offices, water point, operation center, and the different areas in local villages in Simi region. Thanks to our hot Michael Grant, we have been able to buy phones uh, for mapping and we have trained youth mappers in rural areas uh, whereby uh, more than 200 ma mappers we have already trained. The maps we have produced will help activists fighting FGM to better protect girls at risk local officials to clearly see where schools, clinics, water points and the population centers are now and a better plan future provisions. Over 1.8 million households are on the map. For the first time, and the local people in 10 areas of rural Tanzania now have access online and on paper to maps of their villages that they have created themselves. So, at Sunday Sana, hot. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Neema Mirimu, as I said before. I volunteer with Crowd to Map Tanzania, and as the video shown, we received a micro grant in the year 2017. And this micro grant enabled us to train some female mappers because I am from the, from the parts. It helped 12 parts in Tanzania, and I volunteer at at the safe houses with Hope for Girls and Women Tanzania where we were able to train some female mappers to map the, the, the Serengeti district with the micro grant. And it really helped because we were able to purchase phones where previously we were using some phones which were being donated. We have a donation program where people donate their Android for phones which they are not using. So previously we were using those donated phones, but now we were able to get a lot of more phones to help to help in to help with our mapping work. And we, we purchased phones and distributed these phones to some of our local mappers. And we were also able to reach to to to, to train. We were able to do the micro grant to train more mappers and bring more mappers on, on board to map the, their areas. But we have faced some, some challenges, some of them which include the, the micro grant tends to be a bit small and it can't cater for some of the needs. For example, we would like to expand this maybe to more districts of the Mara region, like because it's the whole region that's affected by FGM. But we now are able to map like a whole uh, one district and some other parts of other districts. So we, the micro grant usually is limited because it has also to be used in other parts. For example, the, the, there is one in Kagera where, where it was used to map schools, the distances be which girls are able to walk from home to, the, to their schools, these long distances, and it has helped raise some funds to build dormitories for these girls to be able to have like a boarding in their schools, so it re it re the micro grant is being distributed to very, to very different and important projects. So it tends not to be to be enough, 
And also another challenge is that the timing, sometimes we get to wait for some time to get the microgrant to access it. And also uh, another, another challenge is that, as, as I said, that we need really to train and reach more female mappers. So we need to get at least more funds and sometime after getting the micro grant, now we really did train the female mappers. They got the skills and we were able to map. But to continue with this, like where do we get the funds? Where do we get the funds to continue, like continue this work? Because we used the micro grant, yes, we were able to train the mappers, yes. But now how do we continue this? Because after some time, people tend to forget, right? Yes, I, in these rural villages, after some time after you have mapped, and the phones, we usually lend out the phones. So after the, af after the mapping is done, they bring back the phones so that they can be used at different places. So this skill that we did develop with this person, how can we continue? How can we make sure that this person continues to, to develop these skills? Because as I mentioned, the Accessing smartphones, accessing computers in rural Tanzania is very hard. So, yeah, that's, that's some of the challenges. The community... Oh, I'll just speak about, about, about that. That's the achievement of Crowd to Map 2017 in FGM mapping. Community, community at the time of 18 months. That's 18 months. The, the grant time and then grant was 5,000 US dollars for an year. The community growth was 277% and the achievements are as follows. We managed to train 7,500 new mappers with OSM and we managed to map 2.5 million buildings and also field, field mapping 9,000 villages and also train local mappers, 26 areas in, in topics of, of map literacy, ID editor, Josem, and we're also to secure funding to extend our our work. So, as I said, we did we did we did some training in in Mwanza during the Open Data Day, and we are also able to train some new mappers on on OSM and on Josem on field maps, field papers, and also on the use of maps that make up. Um, slight technical difficulty, but Miriam from GeoChicas is going to talk while I just figure that out. Hi, everyone. So I think for speaking about the micrograms, we need to have uh, before and after. Uh, before the micrograms, as many of you know, uh, back in September 2017, we have two major earthquakes in Mexico. So the first earthquake touched uh, two states that are considered two of the poorest states of the country. One is Oaxaca, one is Chiapas. In the one, there is one uh, a large uh, in the indigenous population. And the second uh, earthquake touched uh, mostly in the Pacific and also hit very hard Mexico City. So but also, of course, touch Chiapas and Oaxaca for the second time. So we had a lot of people who were displaced, many people living in temporary shelters. So uh, when we received the, the whole micro grant, we decided that we are going to be using this amount of money to be able to document what happened since uh, the whole community and also the Open State of Mexico community in Latin America, they did all the mapping of uh, Chiapas and Oaxaca during the earthquakes, like 48 hours, millions of buildings were added and also roads. So we wanted to see what happened after, one year after. So uh, with, with the money, uh, there were a couple of things done. One is uh, right now you can see in the picture, uh, Benny Carvajal, she was trained. She is a young student that just graduated from the state of the Mexico University. So she has a little experience in field work, but uh, with the help of Celine uh, and also having some guidance, she was able to do some quali qualitative um, research on the field. So we sent her with another person to the, to the areas in order to make a couple things. One was doing photo mapping using OpenStreetCam and also using Mapillary 
in thousands of kilometers in these areas of Oaxaca, the areas affected. So she visited uh, Huchitán, north part of Oaxaca, the part by the east, uh, the, the Gulf of Oaxaca, and also do this kind of interviews in the one. We wanted to check at the same time if there was any gender-based violence in the areas or in the, in the shelters. And the good thing is that because these communities, uh, they come from, uh, from two main indigenous groups, one is Zapoteco, one is Mixteco. They are really like a community oriented in the one they defend themselves. They have even local authorities in the ones, uh, the good thing is that we didn't find um, gender-based violence. But with the photo mapping, we were able to notice what is there, what is not there anymore, and even one year after, what has been either demolished or either uh, reintegrated or either like is, is still like standing right there. So that's something that the data is already there and people can use it in any in anything they want. So that was one thing. And so now we're still in the phase in the one we are analyzing the data to to give like a final report to HOT. But so far, I think this has been good for empowering also more women in the community of OSM or GIS students. And also uh, one of the plans is in the second stage of the, of the micro grant, do some kind of um, guidance, like written formal guidance in the one how we are going to be showing our experience and also kind of the, the learning lessons about how we can keep empowering more students like Benny or some other students in other areas to keep doing this kind of work and also the learnings we are sharing with them. Thank you. Cool. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for sharing your experiences of actually running the microgrants. Um, personally, I think microgrants are one of the coolest things HOT does because it enables all of this kind of um, really local stuff that actually is, is quite um, difficult for people in the um, global community, other countries, etc., to contribute to. Um, and that clearly is a huge gap in um, the quality and um, expansion of OSM. Um, we also did have a few things we wanted to share around actually how we set up the program and challenges we faced there. Um, so one of them, our expectations were that we were actually going to need to help people learn how to map, use new tools, do field mapping if they'd not done those things before. Um, and that was like a completely uh, naive expectation because actually the OSM community is already really well set up to um, answer those questions. So people were actually getting those answers from WhatsApp groups that they were part of, from Learn OSM, from asking individual contacts that they'd met or had helped them in the past, um, and they really didn't need any support from HOT um, for that. Um, however, we actually did need to provide a lot of support in things like how to um, manage a grant, how to keep your receipts, how to submit those in a financial report, things that, I mean, we need to be accountable on um, what the money is spent on and um, processes like that were on the whole things people weren't that familiar with. Um, so we learned we really needed to resource there, um, which was a bit of a switch. We didn't provide any mapping support, but we did provide other kind of admin support and things like that. Um, we also um, didn't quite anticipate how difficult it is to send international transfers to 31 communities who have never received an international transfer before. Um, that took us ages, um, and there are people within HOT who, who put a surprisingly uh, large amount of effort into having to make that happen. Um, there was, uh, we want to do reporting on this, and we want to be able to be accountable for the uh, money and how it's spent, but we also don't want to burden a community who's actually like all volunteers and really trying to map. So, you know, we don't want to give them a report that's going to take them a week to fill in because they have other stuff to do. Um, then uh, we also are thinking more about how we move towards data use um, because data creation is easy to uh, fund and easy to measure. Data use is longer than the period of a micro grant like that's a long term um, a long term thing um, and sustainability as well um, generally we're I think uh, kind of wanting to help communities become more sustainable um, but sustainable means different things to different people and there are a range of factors which are actually correlated with sustainable with with kind of 
longevity and increasing quantity and quality of data. Um, is that sustainability is probably not a question for now. Um, but we've come up with this framework, which looks a bit messy right now, um, and is something we're trying to kind of refine and put all of the grantees um, to use. And so that they can basically start thinking about how they could make their community more sustainable. Um, so there's some things in this that are really simple on the left hand side, like having a space to map, having people come and um, having, you know, equipment, etc. Um, but then there's loads of other things which are important in sustainability, like um, local governance and what appetite people have for um, things like uh, open data, using geospatial data, etc. in your local area. Um, there's a lot that we think, um, there's like a thing on the uh, bottom about like what's easier to fund on the left hand side. That's more what we're funding right now through microgrants. It's all kind of low hanging fruit. On the right hand side, these are things we probably need to provide like a really good mentorship program, some guidance and support for to make those things happen. Um, so we're kind of well aware that to make microgrants better and more sustainable and help communities in the longer term, we can't just provide a bunch of laptops, walk away and say we did a good job, right? Um, so we're really trying to think about how we can um, how we can kind of move people more to like the right hand side of this um, thing. Uh, so the final thing to say would be that uh, the microgrants are entirely funded by community donations um, and corporate donations in our end of year fundraising campaign. Um, so we normally try to uh, raise around thirty thousand dollars, and all of that is um, kind of given straight out in microgrants. Um, we'll be starting it again in November, so um, a lot of people in this room already support that program and hopefully hearing from Neymar and uh, Miriam kind of uh, demonstrates some of the impact that it has. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll be starting it again in November to support microgrants for 2019 um, and anyone who wants to be involved in the program in any way at all, please get in touch. Thanks. You mean the actual things on the slide or the boxes? Yeah. Um, so on the, basically we've grouped what elements that we think contribute to increasing quality, quantity of data and longevity of community. They're the things we're initially looking at as sustainability indicators. We've grouped those into four categories, which are resources, technical skills, organization and the governance, and then the networks that that community exists within. The first two resources and technical skills, i.e. training, are quite easy to fund, and that's what we're funding right now. So that's this kind of first bottom one. And then on the right, then these are things that require more guidance, support. Um, perhaps we need someone like within HOT to provide mentorship on those um, types of things. Um, and then on the bottom, these are things that you kind of need to have like a successful open mapping community in any place, which is that it needs to be lawful without any fear of prosecution. Uh, basic human needs need to be met because like, if people don't have water or food, they ain't going to be mapping. Um, and sufficient income to support contrib contributions afterwards. Um, so like one of the things that Neymar raised around, um, you know, we can give people a phone, but if they don't have any credit and they don't have any means to buy any credit, then they can map for the period of time we give them credit, but no longer. So how do we um, resolve that, basically? Any other questions? Yeah, so uh, yesterday we actually received a grant to continue supporting gender-based programs uh, with microgrants. Um, so next year we're going to have a program which is working with the um, current micrograntees who made really great progress in terms of uh, like social issues in their communities. So they mapped, but they were actually using mapping as a tool to like reduce the digital gender divide, change attitudes to something like FGM. Um, so next year we're going to be supporting GeoChicas, um, crowd to map and OpenStreetMap Zambia with another kind of larger microgrant, which will help them scale those activities, um, which we're really happy about. It's amazing to be able to, to do that program. But I mean, that's only three communities and it's only one year. Um, so we have this same thing every year where we try to keep the microgrant program going through this end of year fundraising campaign. Um, so that we can kind of rely on that 
being available every year. Um, but in terms of other donor funding to continue microgrants at scale, we'd really, um, we'd love to be able to kind of scale a program like this because I think it's where we can have a huge amount of impact um, quite easily, to be honest. Like, I think all of this is low-hanging fruit that just needs kind of attention and support. Cool, thank you very much. Thank you.